So to fit this regression model, what we're looking at is an equation of this kind, log of pi i over 1 take pi i is beta naught, the intercept, beta 1 times the age of the particular person, beta age i, and beta 2 times the sex of the person. And if I take exponentials of both sides, I get the odds ratio as pi i over 1 take pi i is exponential on the right hand side. And if I then solve for my pi i over here, I get pi i is the exponential of the regression equation over 1 plus the exponential of the regression equation. In R, the model is fitted by the GLM command. GLM stands for Generalized Linear Model. And the Generalized Linear Model is for count data. So the same format is following from there. The same syntax. I've got my response is status. That's binary. And that needs to be 1, 0. It can't be just something like sex, male, female. It needs to be 1, 0. I have age of the person plus 6. I still have the data command is data equals data frame. But I've got next to a thing there called family. Now it says family equals binomial. Link is logit. This I don't need. Without that, it will still fit the logit by default. And of course, the reason is logic is logic is that there's another way of also fitting binary models. But if you leave the family's binomial by default, it will fit the logit linking. So you'll find in my command, I'll usually just drop. You'll find in my model fitting, I'll usually just drop the extra command and just simply say family's binomial. So those are the important bits. And then again, I save this in a model object, which is a dot glm object. Donor. So it says here there are various very many link functions. So the link function can be either logit or identity, which is the same as Gaussian. It can be gamma, all those kinds of things. We won't look at many of those, but we'll look at the class one afterwards. So this, as we said, is an important class of models that actually works with count data. Also includes Gaussian data, of course. The output here is going to be, so I've got 6 here, I'm using, and you can see how this command works, we've done this before in some other cases, I'm re-leveling this donor dot sex, in other words, I'm reordering the sex as reference is male. So that means that female will now appear in my model, and male won't. So here's my model. If you look at the output, it looks similar to the output you get from the linear model. Most things are similar. Everything, in fact, is exactly the same, except for one little thing here. It says dispersion parameter for the binomial family taken to be equal to 1. We'll get to that afterwards. But otherwise, I still get here the effects or the intercepts of the, the particular coefficients of each of the variables. I get the significance here as well. I get the AIC over here. And I've got this extra bit about deviance, which we didn't have before, null deviance and residual deviance. We'll get to those afterwards as well. So that means, as far as parameter estimates go here, my beta naught, the intercept is 1.6331, and my beta 1 here for age is negative 0.0782, and for females is 1.5973. So by looking at those, I know that both the variables age and sex are female, and a female age and sex are significant. I can see straight away that because male is reference, compared to males, the coefficient of female is positive. That means females are more likely to survive. I can look at not racial later on. As far as age goes, it looks like as people grow older, their chances of survival decreases. That makes sense as well. So we'll take a look at how this is used. Now, as I said earlier, that all the p-values here are two-sided. So there will all be probability of, in this case, it's a z-value. So it's probability of z. What I've got here, my z-value is negative 2.10. So the p-value here should correspond, correspond to probability of z less than negative 2.10. But because it's a two-sided p-value, that should be double two times that. You can check that if you wish. So for the ith individual, the log odds of survival is 1.6331 minus 0 0.0782 times the age of the person plus 1.573 times the sex of the person. 
and I can work out the probability here of survival for the ith person by just simply reversing the, refer, reversing the equation and there's the equation I get here. Here's a plot of the survivals for males and females with age. So you can see probability of survival here actually. You can see that the females have a higher probability of survival at every age, even at the higher ages, although it seems to come together, so maybe towards the high end there is not much difference left between males and females, but overall it looks like the females have a high order of survival. You will see the male survival actually goes down very fast with age, the females tend to stay there for a little while, so the male can, tends to go down this way very fast, the females tend to stay up a little bit and then they still start going down here. All we've said before here, the expected value is given by the equation there, as we've got pi i, and the variance is pi i, 1 minus pi i, depending on the value of the x's, because of course the pi is dependent on the values of the x's here. Now, interpretation is the same as before, the odds ratio is exponential over the equation of regression and the odds log ratio of course gives me the equation of regression itself and I can compute the odds ratio simply by what I've done before, taking exponential of the equation and what happens here when I'm taking a look at the odds ratio for given values of a parameter so if I've got here the equation, if everything else is the same if I take the value of y equals 1 for a given uh, variable a and compare it to the odds of y equals given given variable x equals b. So in that case I get exponential of b to 1 a minus b. And the way it works out here as you can see here in our calculations is that I've got omega a over omega b and the odds ratios divided. And if I divide those ratios I've got exponential of b to 1 plus b to 1 a over the exponential of beta naught plus beta 1b. If I divide exponentials, it's the same as subtracting the coefficients, and you can see the beta naught cancel off, and I've got beta 1 times a minus b. So comparing the odds ratio to, for two values of a variable, essentially it's going to be the coefficient of the variable times the difference between the values of the variable. That's simple enough. And you can see how, how that works out for male and female, because female was a reference, and the value for female would be 0, sorry, male was reference, so b would be 0 and every female is 1, and you can see how that works out. So here we'd say that the change of 1 unit in y, uh, well, odds of y equals 1, a change of 1 unit in the expansion variable will change the odds of success, or odds of y equals 1, by the factor exponential of beta 1. And if I have got uh, p variables, then the same thing applies for the change in any one of the variables. So we're going to assume one by one, essentially. If all the other variables are held the same, constant, then what is the effect of this variable x1 in that case? And this is this exponential of beta 1. Uh, don't usually change variables more than one at a time, because to compare what's happening with the effect of a variable means I hold everything the same, then change it. So if I'm looking at, say, comparing males and females, I'll compare males and females at the same age, and say for the given age, the males and females, females have a higher odds of survival. If I look at age, I'll look at what happens with males only, and then females only. I can look at them together, it's more complicated, we'll see that afterwards. So all those things that I've said here are, are, are still just in this slide here, so for females, the odds of survival are exponential of 1.597, it's 4.94. You might hear this sometimes, or read this sometimes, that sometimes you'll find they're saying males have a what, whatever more chances or odds of, of the disease. This is exactly what's going on here, it's odds ratio, ratio here. So females are 4.94 times, have 4.94 times the odds of survival compared to males of the same age. If I look at something like age in this case, <coughs> If I expect, in other words, given that it's either for males or females, then the odds of survival here is for a, sin, a, a year difference in age would be x of negative 
zero point zero seven eight four, which is point nine two four eight. So every year, older a person is, the odds of survival will be point nine two times that. In other words, there's a change in the odds of survival. So an older person by one year, there is ninety two. 92.48% of the odds of survival for a one for a person who is younger by one year. If I look at something more reasonable, like a 10 year age difference, so as age increases by 10 years, you can see I get 10 times that, which is the same as this thing to the power 10, and that I've got 0 0.9428, 0.9248 to the power 10, means that a person who is 10 years older, the odds of survival is less than half. Or the other way of putting the thing is the survival or the survival is 45.8% or it decreases by 100 take that, which is 54.2%. And the odds of survival decreases by 54.2%. So look at this slide carefully to understand how we can interpret these things. Calculations here uh, as far as probability goes, you can see what's going on here. I've got age is 45 and this is for a female, the odds of so probability of survival is 0.42. If an age is 45 and it's, the person is male, the odds of the probability of survival is 0.132. And of course, if I divide those two, I should get the odds I had earlier. <coughs> For individual R, we can see probability here is 0.748. Uh, odds of survival, odds is 0.748. And for individual J here is 0.152. As far as odds goes, if I divide those odds together, I get the 4.94 I had earlier. Our also corresponds many other things in the output. We'll look at that in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.